Are you tired of being tired all the time? Are you trying to lose weight but you always seem to struggle with it? Are you hungry all the time and feel like you need coffee and snacks just to get through the day? Would you like to not get diabetes? The solution to all of these problems might come down to one and the same factor. And in this video, I'll show you what I discovered in my latest health-related experiment, which involved connecting my body to my phone, sort of. And if you stick around, you'll discover why pastry is a better breakfast choice than what you might be having right now. So, instructions. Here's what you're supposed to do. Attach this to the back of my arm. Put these two things. Open this, and unscrew that, put it in here. Push it down, step forward. To my arm. You ready? Three, two. Uh, oh. Don't feel anything, actually. Hey, you have an air tag. <laughs> <laughs> now you can always find me. If I ever lose shame. <laughs> this is a continuous glucose monitor, or CGM for short. It inserts a microfilament underneath my skin and it connects to my phone via Bluetooth. So now I can get a blood sugar level reading anytime I want by just tapping my phone against the sensor. At the end of the day, I can get an overview of my blood sugar levels throughout the day. This shows me how my body responds to different foods. I wore a CGM for 30 days, and during that time I tried all kinds of foods and food combinations. At the end, I analyzed all of this data that I had gathered. And as you'll see by the end of this video, this data revealed some really interesting insights about energy levels, eating habits, and health. Okay, so what is this glucose stuff and what does a graph like this actually mean? Well, as an example, let's take two different breakfast options. You already know that this is healthy and this is not. But why exactly is that? This is where the glucose monitor comes in. The CGM shows me how my body is processing sugar after I ate a meal. So let's give it a try. Here's what happens when I eat the cinnamon bun for breakfast and compare that to the more wholesome breakfast. So what's happening here? The cinnamon bun is very sweet and full of simple carbohydrates. When I eat it, it dumps loads of sugar into my bloodstream. And my body then has to release insulin to process this sugar. When you see a big spike like this, that's basically a sugar rush. And what happens afterwards is a crash below baseline. And as you'll see in a moment, this is hugely significant. The key thing to remember here is that a graph like this is good because it means that my body doesn't have to deal with any extremes. A graph like this is bad because it's too much sugar too quickly. This kind of thing overworks my insulin system. And see this red zone here? The more I push my body into this red zone, the more I'm overworking my metabolism. And if I keep that up for long enough, I eventually get type two diabetes. You can think of type two diabetes as a condition where you've overworked your body's sugar processing system to the point where it can't function anymore. Basically all the sugar you keep eating beats the shit out of your pancreas until it just taps out. Needless to say, that is not a good thing. So, okay, we don't want to get diabetes and sugar is bad for you. That's not exactly groundbreaking news so far, but this is only scratching the surface of what I discovered in this CGM experiment. I had this one experience that was really eye-opening. So here's what happened. One day I was driving and I started feeling a little bit sleepy. So what do I do? I pull over at the next gas station and grab a coffee. Easy fix, right? The coffee should wake me up and help me stay alert for the rest of my drive. And normally I would have been right. Let's see what happens when you drink a simple, plain black coffee. In terms of the glucose response, it has basically zero effect. So you drink the coffee, caffeine hits your system, you get the alertness and you're good to go. But this is where I made a mistake. You see at the gas station, I grabbed one of those canned coffees and I just thought, hey, this is gonna be more convenient to drink while driving. Better than having a flimsy little paper cup with piping hot coffee in it, right? But then when I was back on the road, the coffee didn't seem to work. About 20 minutes later, I had to pull over and take a nap on the roadside. I was just too tired to drive safely. What the hell happened here? Well. Look at what the CGM graph showed me later that day. Here's where I had the coffee, then a huge spike, massive crash below baseline. The canned coffee has caffeine, of course, but it also has loads of sugar. And the sugar spike and crash really overshadowed any effects the caffeine would have had. Now, while this graph shows my blood sugar levels, it also basically represents my energy level, my awakeness. The canned coffee gave me a very brief boost, but then before I knew it, I was more tired than before. This is the first big insight I got from this experiment. Foods that give you this big sugar spike and crash also tend to make you feel tired, low energy, and unmotivated after eating them. And this doesn't just go for your typical sugary foods, by the way. Here's coffee and a croissant for breakfast. Here's a plate of pasta, and here's a handful of nachos. Foods with lots of sugar, 
Foods with simple carbs, think white flour, and highly processed foods all tended to give me the same kind of glucose response curve. And they also all tended to give me that spike in energy and then crash and tiredness afterwards. Other foods create a much gentler glucose response curve or almost no response at all. Here are some examples. Here's a big tasty salad, avocado toast with scrambled eggs, or blueberries and nuts as a snack. Eating meals like this makes me feel energetic for a long time and makes me feel able to get shit done. No brief rush of energy and then feeling like I need to take a nap. Instead, I get steady energy for many hours afterwards. This CGM experiment gave me deeper insights into what is and what isn't healthy food. And that made me wonder, what about certain foods that are specifically marketed as being healthy? Say this fitness cereal right here. I mean, look at all the healthy markers on the box and it says fitness right there in the name. Surely this must be an excellent breakfast choice, right? Well, here's what happens if I eat a bowl of this cereal. This isn't just bad. This is actually worse than the pastry I ate at the beginning of the experiment. And that was supposed to be the bad example, but it gets even worse. The official serving size for this cereal as recommended on the package is 30 grams. Here's what that looks like in a bowl. No person in the history of the universe has ever had a portion of cereal this small and then walked away. You could feed this to a single sparrow and it would still be hungry afterwards. So, okay, of course, the portion of cereal I ate is more than this recommended portion. But not only that, what I noticed was that once I finished my bowl of cereal, all I wanted was more cereal. So this breakfast didn't just make me feel sluggish and tired like other sugary foods. It also made me feel more hungry after eating it than before. This is my second huge takeaway from this experiment. Different foods make you feel either hungrier or a lot less hungry after you eat them. And I have now come to think about food differently. I now ask myself these four questions about anything I eat. How tasty is it? How nutritious is it? What are my energy levels like 20 to 60 minutes after eating? And how hungry am I 20 to 60 minutes after eating? Those last two questions are a very good proxy for how metabolically healthy a food is. In other words, what your glucose curve looks like if you were to measure it. And overall, this gives you a completely different picture of what healthy and unhealthy food actually means. Think about it like this. Our fitness cereal here is tasty, yes, and it has some nutritious value as advertised all over the packaging. But when it comes to questions number three and four, it scores really poorly. And compare that to a breakfast of avocado toast, which scores well on all four questions. Now here's the important part. The difference in outcomes from eating these foods is mind-blowingly huge. So let's say you start your day with a bowl of cereal. What happens next is, well, within 20 to 30 minutes, you feel tired and sluggish and hungry so you feel like, hey, I need more energy to keep going. So you reach for, let's say, another bowl of cereal. And once again, this next meal spikes your blood sugar. It gives you that crash, makes you feel tired, makes you feel hungry. So that constantly makes you want to eat even more, makes you feel low energy, makes you feel hungry. Then, because you're feeling tired all the time and you need to focus and you need to get stuff done, you start slamming coffees. But if your coffee contains sugar, then it's adding to this problem even more. And if you do this all day, you'll feel tired all day and your body won't be able to catch a break. That is until you lie in bed at night trying to get some sleep. That is when your body can finally process all of that blood sugar and it can normalize. And now the caffeine of all the coffees you had hits you and you can't sleep. And as a result of that, tomorrow you'll start your day already feeling tired and you'll reach for a big bowl of cereal trying to get some energy in and the cycle continues. Now, I bet some of you are watching this and going, holy shit, that's me. How many people are desperately trying to manage their sleep and manage their energy levels, but all you're doing is you're stacking one sugar spike after another, trying to get out of that slump that comes after your blood sugar levels crash and your energy levels crash. Now think of it in the long term. If you keep doing this, you'll gain weight and that has all kinds of negative consequences, both for your health and socially. Plus you're always sluggish, you're always low energy, you can't focus. That has negative consequences on your career, on your ability to make money. And to add insult to injury, this whole thing leads you directly down a path to diabetes, a disease that can become debilitating. And all of this is kicked off with a poor choice of breakfast, starting a cycle that gets difficult to escape from. How fucked up is it that this advertises itself as healthy? I'm someone who cares about my health and fitness, and I can't believe that this thing says fitness 
on the box using the four questions for assessment. This is the worst food of everything I tried in this entire 30 day experiment. I don't recommend that you have a cinnamon bun for your breakfast. It's not a health food, but you're literally better off having a cinnamon bun than having a bowl of this cereal. Now the flip side of this, the opposite is also true and you can put yourself into a positive cycle. Foods that score high on all four questions are foods that are tasty and healthy and good for you, but also they make you feel energetic and they make you feel full which means that you won't constantly be snacking, you won't constantly have food cravings, you won't constantly be low energy and almost falling asleep. And as a result of that, it means that you can easily maintain your weight or even lose weight with no extra effort at all. I have to tell you, at the beginning of this experiment, when I slapped this little sensor on my arm, I did not think I would discover something as dramatic as this, but here we are. Here's my implementation challenge for you. For the next week, keep a simple log of every meal and every snack you eat and rate it from one to five on these four questions. How tasty is it? How nutritious is it? What are your energy levels like 20 to 60 minutes after eating? And how hungry are you 20 to 60 minutes after eating? Once you pay attention to it and track it, it will blow your mind how clearly different the effect of different foods are on your energy and hunger levels. And I reckon answering these four questions is almost as good for giving you insights as is slapping one of these CGMs on your arm. Plus, it's a lot cheaper. Next, all you have to do is start steering your eating habits towards foods that score highly on all four categories. And note that I'm not telling you to eat food that you don't like because it's good for you. I'm not telling you to chew on raw broccoli or anything like that. There are so many healthy food options available. You can definitely find something that's good for you, that you find tasty, and that scores well on all four questions. If you do this, you'll be surprised to see how easy it can be to feel full of energy all day, have fewer food cravings, and even lose weight without really trying. Give it a go and report back with your experience in the comments below. Now, that's not even all I discovered with this CGM experiment. One of the things I uncovered is that it's not just what you eat, but also when and how you eat that can make a huge difference to your health and hunger levels. For example, did you know that two entire bananas can be one of the best things, but also one of the worst things to add to your diet, entirely depending on how you eat them? I've got a lot more incredible graphs and results, as well as food hacks to share with you. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on the next video. Don't hit the notification bell though. You're not allowed to do that here. No, don't do it. Don't. It's only for the worthy.